Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I'm just going to do a quick update to a previous tutorial, so this should be a short one. Um, so what we're going to talk about is another way to do keyboard shortcuts that's a little bit more scalable uh, and organized. So I wanted to add that to my somewhat more manual uh, earlier methodology. There are some reasons to use this uh, versus that. There are some reasons to use that versus this. So it's really a personal preference, um, but I wanted to show everybody a couple different ways. So first, what I'm going to do is just give us a very quick network to work with. Make both of these 32-bit float. We'll make both of these 2048 by 2048, and we'll turn monochrome off. And then for this one, we'll drop the harmonics. We'll make the period like four. And we will then transform boom and then we'll also transform this noise uh, with referencing that parameter so now we have our effect that we can work with, we can see what's going on here, it's whatever, easy enough. Um, all right, so what we're going to do today is use keyboard shortcuts uh, via the keyboard in dat. So this keyboard in dat um, will basically just take in, oops, sorry about that, um, hazards of just pressing a bunch of keys in touch designer. Um, so as we are pressing, oh, that was the home key. As we are pressing different keys, we can see that the keys get uh, listed out in the stat. And then we have some callbacks, uh, which I think everybody is used to. So what we're going to do before we jump into actually setting up those shortcuts are collapse these guys uh, into a component. And then we're just going to create an extension called... Shortcut extension, we'll add it, we'll initialize it, and then we'll open it in an external editor. Cool. <clears throat> and then we'll get rid of all of this. So the how this kind of all works is you take a extension, um, which is really handy for organizing various bits of functionality within a project. You define some functions within that product, uh, project, rather. So let's say we could have a function to toggle translate for noise. And then we could have another function to toggle backdrop tops, uh, which is the same function that we used in our last tutorial. Um, and then we will need another function to associate a shortcut with a method to call. So then we'll have our three different methods. Uh, and then this last one will be what ties together our keyboard in dat with our functions. So let's knock these out real quick. Uh, I'm going to go kind of quickly through this. So don't worry if it doesn't all make sense. Um, I think you should be able to follow along. So what we'll do is if UI dot panes dot current dot show backdrop tops is currently set to true, then we want to take this and we just want to set it to false. And otherwise, we want to set it to true. That's pretty simple. And whoops, that was this one. All right. And then now we just need a function to toggle our noises. Uh, so let's say to toggle translate self. And this function is going to first say, okay, uh, what we need is our noise translate parameter. So that's going to be part 
equals there's one dot par dot t z. Okay, and then all we need to do is say if the mode of this parameter is equal to constant, then we know it's not translating currently. So then what we do is set the mode to expression. And then we set the expression to be whatever we want. Um, I'm going to do abs times dot seconds times 0 0.1. Now, if our par mode is not a constant, then we know that it is a dynamic expression. So first, we want to take the current value uh, by getting, bar, sorry, we want to access the current value by using the eval method. Uh, then we want to set the mode to constant. And then we want to set the value to the value it was before we paused. And then finally, we will need a shortcut handler, which is going to take in a self and a shortcut. And what this will do is set up a dictionary that's going to associate different keyboard shortcuts uh, with different functions. So I'm going to have control D be associated with our uh, self dot toggle backdrop function. And then I'm going to have control shift T be associated with our self dot toggle translate function. Then all we need to do is use the past shortcut uh, to get using the get method uh, to access the element of the dictionary that has the uh, index or rather key that corresponds to the shortcut that we are passing into the function via the keyboard in dat, which we'll set up in just a second. Uh, and then finally, we just have to call the function. And we'll do that with a try accept. Accept exception as E, and then we'll just print that exception. Okay, cool. So this should pretty much square us away. Let's get rid of that. Um, so now we just have to finally set up the last few things we need on this keyboard in that. So here we will input our shortcuts. And that will be done like this. Control D, Control Shift T, the same as here. Uh, and then all we have to do is add a quick function or a quick line here in the callback. And what we want to do is call the shortcut handler function and pass in the shortcut name from the dat. So now when we when our dat recognizes a shortcut, uh, it will take the shortcut name, which is going to be this, it will then use the callbacks to pass it through our extensions shortcut handler. That will take the shortcut it will look up the shortcuts associated function in our shortcut dictionary, and then it will run that function. So let's test things out. First, control D. That's working. That's great. And control shift T. And we can see that there we are now pausing exactly where we're at. And if we hit control shift T again, we are now toggling back to a translated uh, parameter with a dynamic reference. So a couple easy things to do. Um, this keyboard in DAT's really great. And if you use extensions a lot, as I do, uh, it's a really helpful way to extend your functionality here. So that is pretty much it for today. Uh, it was a quick one, but hopefully one that will help everybody out. I know it's been a big help for me. Thanks.